MCSIF presents an overview on basics of options. This presentation covers fundamentals of commodity options and discusses their mechanics. Like any other derivative contract, options are financial instruments based on an underlying asset as the word suggests. Options refer to choices to hold the commodity today so instead of buying or selling the commodity today, we defer the purchase or sale of that commodity to a future date. There are various types of underlying assets. The underlying assets could be commodities, commodity futures, forex, stocks, stock indices, debt instruments or bond indices. In an insurance contract, you need to pay premiums for protection against unforeseen circumstances. These could cover life, auto, crop, fire, accidents, and so on. Options are like insurance contracts where you pay a premium to protect against unforeseen price movements. Options are unique financial instruments which give the buyer the right but not the obligation to buy or sell the underlying asset. You can buy or sell such instruments at a specific price on or before a certain date, for which the buyer pays a premium up front. There are two sides to an option trade the buyer and the seller. The buyer pays the premium to buy the right to buy or sell the seller receives the premium to sell the right and is obligated to sell or buy if exercised. The buyer is known as option holder. The seller is known as option writer. Just like insurance contracts, options also have expiry. This is called the maturity or expiry of the options contract. More you move closer towards the expiry, less is the premium that needs to be paid for the option contract. So the natural question is why are options so popular today? Options are popular as they cost only a fraction of the value of the underlying. The options premium is thus only a smaller piece of the bigger pie. In Indian commodity markets, options are based on futures. For example, the gold options is based on gold futures as the underlying. So is the case with options on crude oil, copper, zinc, and silver. Commodity options therefore are also known as options on futures. Options are of two types. Call options, it gives buyer the right to buy the underlying asset. Put options, it gives buyer the right to sell the underlying asset. Both these options expire on the maturity or expiry date of the contract. At expiry, the buyer of the option can exercise the right to buy or sell the underlying asset such contracts that are exercised only at expiry are known as european options in indian commodity derivative exchanges the regulator has allowed the trade of european options only a long call option is the right to buy the underlying commodity futures at a fixed price k this fixed price k is known as strike price buyer exercises the right if the price of the underlying ends above the strike price at expiry the exchange offers a number of strike prices at which you can choose to trade buyer of call option has the right to buy the underlying contract at maturity if the underlying price ends above the strike price which is the initially chosen buying price. Buyer has no obligation to buy the underlying contract at maturity if the price falls. On the other hand, the seller of a call option is obligated to sell the underlying if the call buyer exercises the right. If the call buyer does not exercise the right the seller is not obligated to sell. If your view is a bullish market, you can buy a call option to participate in the commodity upside. A call option is an instrument that provides you the advantage of participating in bull market when the underlying commodity price is expected to go up. If the upside emerges, you will benefit from holding a long call option. Buyer initially pays a premium to protect against market upturns with no obligation. Buyer hopes the market goes up. He is bullish. Seller hopes that the market does not go up. He is bearish. Another reason why call option contracts are so popular is because 
it provides an unlimited profit if the underlying commodity goes up. On the flip side, the loss is limited to the premium paid. Buyer only loses the premium. This clearly illustrates who benefits if the underlying commodity price rises. The buyer starts making money at the expense of the seller. Since the buyer possess the right to buy at a lower price. And when the buyer exercises that right, the seller is obligated to sell the underlying at lower levels. The focus is now on the net profit made by the call option buyer in the trade. The buyer gains 4 bags as the gross profit from the price rise. However, has to pay one bag as the premium, which was paid initially. Hence, the net profit for the buyer is three bags. On the flip side, the seller initially gains one bag as option premium. But since the seller has an obligation to sell, the seller ends up giving four bags. Hence, the net loss to the seller is three bags. Thus. The larger the price rise in the underlying, the better for the call option buyer. The more the price rise is equivalent to more profit. For example, if the price rise is bigger, the option buyer receives 8 bags instead of 4. In a call option contract, if the underlying commodity price goes down, the only amount that the call buyer loses is the option premium initially paid. Whereas, the option seller benefits with the gains from the option premium initially received. Buyer of put option has the right to sell the underlying contract at maturity if the underlying price ends below the strike price, which is the initially chosen buying price. Buyer has no obligation to sell the underlying contract at maturity if the price rises. On the other hand, the seller of a put option is obligated to buy the underlying if the put buyer exercises the right. If the put buyer does not exercise the right the seller is not obligated to buy. A put option is an instrument that provides you the advantage of participating in. Bear market when the underlying commodity price is expected to go down if your view is a bearish market you can buy a put option to participate in the commodity downside if the downside emerges you will benefit from holding a long put option. Buyer initially pays a premium. To protect against market downturns with no obligation. Buyer hopes the market falls. He is bearish. Seller hopes that the market does not fall. He is bullish. Another reason why put option contracts are so popular is because it provides great profit if the underlying commodity price goes down. On the flip side, the loss is limited if the prices go up. A put option buyer only loses the premium. This clearly illustrates who benefits if the underlying commodity price fall. The buyer starts making money at the expense of the seller. Since the buyer possess the right to sell at a higher price. And when the buyer exercises that right, the seller is obligated to buy the underlying at higher levels. The focus is now on the net profit made by the put option buyer in the trade. The buyer sells 4 bags at higher strike price and makes gross profit from the price fall. However, has to pay 1 bag as the premium, which was paid initially. Hence. The net profit for the buyer is 3 bags. On the flip side, the seller initially gains 1 bag as option premium. But since the seller has an obligation to buy, the seller ends up buying 4 bags at higher strike price. Hence, the net loss to the seller is 3 bags. Option payoff is the cash flow at expiry basically it is the intrinsic value of the option at expiry. It is the difference between the strike price and the underlying price at expiry. For call option, it is current price minus strike price. For put option, it is strike price minus current price. On the other hand, net option payoff considers the initial premium paid or received to understand it further. Let's consider an example of a payoff table. Suppose you buy a gold call option of strike price 30,000 at a premium of 300 Indian rupees. The table illustrates the calculation of call option payoff. 
If underlying contract at expiry settles at 30,000 or lower, no intrinsic value is left for the call option. If underlying contract settles above 30,000, pay off or call option will be calculated as difference between contract price and strike price for the call buyer. Example if contract settles at 31,000, payoff is 31,000 minus 30,000 which is 1,000. If contract settles at 31,500, payoff is 1,500. We now complete the payoff values for various scenarios of underlying prices at expiry. However, net payoff is calculated by adjusting for the initial premium paid or received. It is calculated as payoff minus initial premium paid for a call option buyer. Continuing with the previous example, if contract settles at 30,000, payoff is zero but net payoff is negative 300, since premium paid for 30,000 strike call option was 300. Similarly, if contract settles at 31,000, net payoff is 1,000 minus 300 which is 700. If contract settles at 31,500, net payoff is 1,500 minus 300 which is 1,200. We now complete the net payoff values for various scenarios of underlying contract prices at expiry. Break-even for a call option contract is that expiry price for the underlying contract where the net payoff becomes zero. In our example, the break-even is 30300 since at this expiry scenario, net payoff to a call option buyer is zero. Let us consider the example of a put option. Suppose you buy a gold put option contract of strike price 31000 at a premium of 500 the table illustrates the calculation of put option payoff. If underlying contract at expiry settles at 31,000 or higher, no intrinsic value is left for the put option. If underlying contract settles below 31,000, payoff or put option will be calculated as difference between strike price and contract price for the put buyer. For instance, if contract settles at 30,500, Payoff is 31,000 minus 30,500 which is 500 if contract settles at 30,000, payoff is 1,000. We now complete the payoff values for various scenarios of underlying prices at expiry. However, net payoff is calculated by adjusting for the initial premium paid or received. It is calculated as payoff minus initial premium paid, for a put option buyer. Continuing with the previous example, if contract settles at 30,500, payoff is 500 but net payoff is zero, since premium paid for 31,000 strike put option was 500. Similarly, if contract settles at 30,000, net payoff is 1,000 minus 500 which is 500. If contract settles at 29,500, Net payoff is 1,500 minus 500 which is 1,000. We now complete the net payoff values for various scenarios of underlying contract prices at expiry. Break-even for a put option contract is that expiry price for the underlying contract where the net payoff becomes zero. In our example, the break-even is 30,500, since at this expiry scenario, net payoff to a put option buyer is zero. Let's understand the concept of moneyness. The first concept in moneyness is the concept of in the money, called IDM. Now we see that an option ends in the money when underlying contract price ends above strike price. This will happen when value of option at expiry is positive. The concept of out of the money called OTM kicks in when underlying contract price ends below strike price. When this happens the value of option becomes zero. As shown in gray shaded area. Finally we say that an option ends at the money, called ADM, 
when underlying contract price ends at strike price. Here also the value of the option is zero.